You welcome back. You're still watching Diplomatic Affairs. We are live on Pan African Television, broadcasting in 32 African countries via satellites and globally via social media. Um, we will be bringing you in on the conversation very soon. We're still talking about the role of election observers. You will be going to the polls. We will see them um, at the various polls. And it's important that we identify with what they do and who they are. And that is why I have my distinguished guest helping us understand the role of election observers on the main maiden edition of season two of diplomatic affairs my name is Harriet Nati now let's continue with our discussion let me come to you um, your excellency Baba Ghana Wakil now a joint high-level pre-election mission of ECOWAS and the African Union paid a courtesy call on the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Her Excellency Shelly Ayokobuchi. I was at that particular assignment. And a few concerns were raised at that meeting. I think after the engagements, their engagement, that is a joint um, high-level pre-election mission, their engagements with stakeholders and then political um, party actors. So we we have the clip which I would want us to play and when we come back then we look at some of the issues that they raised and um, we will take it from there. Then you tell us more about this pre-election um, mission that came into the country. Let's take a look at the clip now. Essentially there are three main areas where uh, we would like to maybe make uh, some uh, some comment. The, the first uh, comment is about uh, the processes itself. Uh, this is linked to the head or the issue that we raise, the registrar in particular, and so on. And that the key partners, the Electoral Commission. Overall, we think that uh, the overall process is really well managed, it's really well. Uh, uh, properly manner. We had a long meeting with the Electoral uh, Commission and really we were reassured that the process was done in a very professional way. I mean, nothing is uh, perfect. It, uh, it does not exist in any country. Uh, but uh, mechanisms are in place to address those uh, issues that can, that can, that can be uh, raised. Yes, there was the issue of the 30,000 uh, 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 registered voter for which uh, they were on a separate list, but it was clarified. So that's it. Um, um, so we just watched a video clip of um, a joint high-level pre-election mission of ECOWAS and that of the African Union, um, who paid a curtsy call on the Foreign Affairs Minister, Shelly Ayokobutri, and um, they discussed a few issues. Now, three key issues came up at this meeting. Um, I'm going to mention the first one, the electoral processes, um, which is the deleting, they, they actually talked about the 30,000 names that was deleted from the um, registrar and that was one of the key issues that they mentioned before we talk yeah. about that yeah. I know I will come to shake but um, your excellency briefly just tell us I'm sure somebody will be wondering what is the pre-election mission um, what do they do why pre-election I, I understand it what it means but I'm sure somebody watching us may not be able to you know um, relate to it. What is that all about? Thank you very much. If simply put, the pre-election mission is on a mission to find out the state of preparedness of all the major key electoral actors, principally the election management body, which in Ghana is the National Election Commission. How prepared are they? How organized are the uh, political parties? How is the campaign going on? How is security being provided for, for the elections? And in doing this, the pre-election mission, which is a high-level mission, meets with all the heads of these agencies, including ministries. The pre-election mission 
which is joint with AU and uh, ECOWAS, ECOWAS, met before meeting the Minister of Foreign Affairs, met with the Minister of Internal Affairs, mm -hmm. the Minister of National Security, mm -hmm. the chairperson of the Election Commission, the Inspector General of Police, who is in charge of the National Election Security Task Force. The stakeholders. Yes, all of them. The National Peace Commission, on face-to-face, one-on-one basis. The National Council on Civil Education. These are all very active players in the election cycle, in the election environment. Mm -hmm. And we met with each and every one of them last October. Okay. Yeah, before we came to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who now is in charge of, of course, international organizations and uh, foreign influences or uh, foreign interventions in, in Ghana. So we told her what we have been doing for the last three, four, in fact it's like about nine days. And uh, we communicated to her the concerns raised about vigilantism. Right. About, yeah, that also came up. Uh, yes, it came up about voter registration mm -hmm. and the missing uh, 30,000 that you mentioned. Names. Let me just say something about the missing 30,000. It's not actually deleted. Mm -hmm. It's quarantined. And uh, as far as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission is concerned, it has been reduced from 30,000 mm -hmm. to 540 only. But as the Sheikh mentioned, uh, each vote, even one I mean, vote, can of make a difference. Out of the 30,000 names, yes. you say are quarantined, are quarantined only has reduced, um, the number reduced to 500 and something. 540. 540. Yeah. Um, Even the 540 mm -hmm. will, if they are present in polling stations, will be able to vote manually, manually once mm -hmm. they are confirmed to have a case. They will still be able to vote. Once the, the, the case of underage voting, the case of multiple registration mm -hmm. are sorted out because mm -hmm. this is why the 30,000 is quarantined. Okay. Yes. All right then. So, well, I, I, I think we will talk about that later. Um, I will find time to go deep into that or, you know, read more on that um, because I believe um, this is new um, um, to me and I'm happy that at least we, we have someone to, to, to uh, expatiate on that. Mm. Now, um, Sheikh, I think that, that was just one of the three concerns mm. raised um, when they had that meeting at Maybe the just Foreign Affairs Ministry. Let me just a, a little. Right, please. Um, I'm happy, Excellency mentioned that mm -hmm. the the communication need to be done carefully because what people are saying is it's been deleted. Yes. If you delete, it means that a person's name has completely been taken off and out of not, the uh -huh. register. But what you're saying is that you have quarantine, and in the current quarantine, there are two categories. There are those whose registration were objected to and they needed to sort out that objection so that they will be brought back on the list and there are some of them who whose case went to the court and the court had ruled in their favor and so therefore their name had been restored and that they will have the right now to to vote mm -hmm. and as in fact as we speak now there are still the, the courts are still making rulings mm -hmm. uh-huh but that there are also the, the, the list of those who did multiple registration. Okay. Uh -huh. Because the the biometric machines uh, were not communicating with each other. All right. Yeah. And so, therefore, one can register for at this point and still move to another place and register. Um, hold on. Are we likely to encounter such a problem in terms of the machines? Are we likely to encounter... No, 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 no. That's the first stage. But by the time we get to the final stage, right. all the machines have been synchronized. In okay. fact, it is the synchrony that was able to detect those names that were that did the multiple, mm. you know, registration. registration. Okay. And so such names were also isolated. All right, uh -huh. then. Exactly. Um, and, and then doing something about them mm -hmm. for such multiple registration, then um, if it is not corrected... Mm. Uh, mm. you will lose your 
right to vote on okay. that day. You won't uh, be able to exactly, vote. Be exactly, because you have violated. All right, you know, great. Yeah. So my producer tells me the second concern that was also, like I said, three major key issues came up. And the second one was the, um, the <coughs> 30,000 names. Um, you said quarantined and now it looks like it's been rectified and the numbers have been the number has reduced to mm -hmm. 500 and something 40 you said 540 now the second one is that you also mentioned the issue of security surrounding the elections um such as the issue of vigilante going to the polls and you feel insecure and you know you people even wouldn't want to go to the polls because they are, they feel unsafe if I am not safe, why do I have to go to the polls? I understand the clip is ready. Let's take a listen. Let's watch the clip and then listen to what transpired at the meeting. The second uh, point that uh, we also uh, would like to indicate is the issue of the security around the, around the election. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, had a very long discussion with the two ministers in charge of security and uh, interior. Uh, there was some issue about uh, the vigilante and the risk that they could cause the threat. But I uh, want to say that we really commend the effort that were made, the very important decision made by the authorities to really address this issue and all the action that are planned to ensure that really the security is really uh, adequately uh, addressed. Right, so that was the president of ECOWAS Commission, Jean-Claude Cassibru, um, in, uh, with the Foreign Affairs uh, Minister at the Ministry, and um, some of the issues that came up when they met with the stakeholders um, for ahead of December 7. Now, the issue of security, which we already mentioned, I'll, I will let you expand on that, Sheikh, and then the meeting with the two ministers in charge of security, that is the National Security Minister, and then the Minister for the Interior. So we will talk about that. Um, what do, Briefly, we don't have much time, but briefly, what do you make of the issue of insecurity? Currently, it looks like the atmosphere is very charged and very sensitive. What do you make of that issue? Uh, yeah, it is true. I mean, uh, largely, uh, some political parties do not have trust in our I mean, security arch architecture. Um, with hindsight, I mean, going back to what happened during the Iowa so West West Wagon and, and what happened. So there's a certain mistrust about how the police will be able to do its work. Um, secondly, vigilantism by law has been disbanded. By law? By law. On the ground? But on the it? ground, it is there. Okay, so we can say it is still dis disbanded. No, no, no. I mean, in other words, if you come out and say you, you, have, you have vigilante, you can be arrested because the law says don't do it. But then it is taking different form, and the different form uh, is so uh, <coughs> invisible uh, because it, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset now. And the political parties are telling their members that elections are won at the polling stations. Yeah. So that kind of vigilance or over vigilance mm -hmm. is where the operations of the uh, vigilantes can be can be found the type of people that will be brought there mm -hmm. and uh, how people will be waiting around to see exactly mm -hmm. uh, what happens um, incidents of violence that could arise especially in matters of controversy that arises where uh, let's say somebody is going to vote and an issue is raised about his vote either his identity or, or his age or something these are matters that needs to be handled carefully mm -hmm. because it could give grounds for escalate into something uh, exactly else. and that's where the security uh, needs to be on the alert as, as we speak now mm -hmm. the police have identified more than six thousand six thousand uh, what we call the hot spots yes yeah um, originally they mentioned four thousand mm -hmm. now it's mm -hmm. gone beyond four thousand mm -hmm. around six thousand plus six thousand plus yeah and it's scattered around around the country now when they say hotspots is these are areas that are prone to violence uh-huh so if six thousand is scattered so what, what means that if contemporaneously mm -hmm. if it happens bam 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 this mm -hmm. this way it means that it can generate a lot of concern in the whole country so we what what but we have been assured by the police 
Okay. In fact, there have been meetings where the police have given us all the, the operations and the levels, mm. the form of action that they are going to take. And, and they are even now doing some public work, uh, are, are registering their presence for people to know that they are ready to deal with anyone who disturbs. But that, what we are saying is that we want them to handle the matter um, with so much caution uh, and also even-handedness to ensure that mm -hmm. um, we don't create fear in the environment. Uh -huh. Because you want an environment that people feel confident to come out exactly. and cast their votes. Right. Once you do anything that creates fear, mm -hmm. they will remain... Exactly. Uh, they so they won't come out they to vote. Come out and that will so, be a problem. So we hope that the police will be able to handle... Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. We yeah. hope so. We hope so. Now, um, so... Um, Let's go to, after the concerns were raised, um, there were a few recommendations as well. And um, let me just um, read what I have here from the president of ECOWAS Commission, Jean-Claude Cassibru. It says, the president reiterated that the mission would insist that the dialogue is deepened um, between stakeholders to increase the level of confidence and decrease the tension. Mm. Now, what do you make of that? These are recommendations. These are recommendations. I'll come to you, Your Excellency. These are recommendations. It's just one of the many recommendations um, that took place at the, at, the, at the program, at the ministry. Um, are you hoping to see that this actually takes shape? Uh, they are not just mere recommendations. Uh, it's somehow, it's, 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 it's something that we take seriously and work towards. Yes. Uh, these things... Uh happening in the electoral environment continuously and uh, the ECOWAS for instance is involved also continuously just three days ago mm -hmm. we came back from Kumasi where we met with regional actors okay. after having met with uh, uh, actors in the capital mm -hmm. we went to the regions where we met traditional rulers, the regional police commissioner, for instance, the regional electoral commissioner for National Electoral Commission, the regional officials of the Peace Council, so that the message is stepped mm -hmm. down yeah, sure. to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. The district levels came up to Kumasi. Mm -hmm. And we have been discussing all the things we have been discussing at the uh, at the national level in Accra mm. with these people, and we are getting assurances okay. and commitments all right. from all these people because it starts with the leaders. Mm -hmm. The youth have the energy right. to unleash, but if the 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 leaders, the elders, socialize them, mm. educate them, yeah. they will not. They the have effect violent. on them. Yes. All right. The, so the understood. Election. Now let's. You mentioned hotspots. I mean, the numbers have jumped from um, four thousand yeah, original four thousand to six thousand plus. plus. <coughs> um, when you do your, when you deploy observers, do you deploy them to these hotspots, or you are able to cover the entire base? Because we have two hundred and seventy-five constituencies. Yes. And then. Um, I mean, uh, close to 40,000 uh, 40, exactly. um, polling stations. Are you able to go cover the entire base or you deal with the hotspots? No, usually what we do, we do, uh, we send our observers to uh, um, sample, uh, sample selected um, polling stations uh, because we don't have the to cover the whole yeah to, to, especially to when the when the numbers have been reduced, have, have been um, reduced. From, with election uh -huh. observers yes. um, four years ago the yes. numbers were pretty high exactly. now it looks like the numbers have come yes down so of but that even as we do so there are areas where we know that it's a hot spot area mm -hmm. then we de definitely will send people there specifically because we also look we have in our what we call a checklist we have what we call critical incidents mm -hmm. uh, especially so that uh, those that we call the rapid response observers, mm -hmm. uh, w which we have deployed, will be able to send us immediately okay. there is occurrence of any incident. Okay. And uh, based on which we are able to give midday report about the election uh, about the electoral environment. Mm -hmm. um, Kodeo usually, usually, according to our operation, 
at the beginning of polls, we make sure we deploy, mm -hmm. and our observers will send us information at our central or What's commission center on the, ground? on the ground. Then, based on that, mm -hmm. we put our report, and midday in the afternoon, 12 o'clock, we are able to give a whole picture right. about the electoral um, uh, situation in, in the country. Okay, Your Excellency, we don't have time. Um, briefly, um, how is i've already asked how deployment is going to be done by codeo um the ECOWAS and then the au coming together as a team to work on this um, particular assignment which is um december 7. um when are we is is the team in already no the team will be in between tomorrow and next tomorrow okay and as i said earlier it will be about 150 man strong team comprising of short-term, long-term, and mm -hmm. technical right. teams. And based on the reports of the exploratory mission, that's the pre-election mission mm -hmm. that was done in October, we have also identified the flashpoints and the hotspots where we will make these deployments of our own election observers. These are trained observers. They have conducted uh, this election observation missions in other countries before coming to Ghana, before Ghana's election, as you are aware, uh, general elections were done in Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. in Guinea, in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. Now one will be done in, uh, in Ghana on December 7th. And before the end of the year, Niger will also have its own election. So we are committing a lot of uh, resources, a lot of technical expertise from the ECOWAS election database to see that one of our member states has a very successful mm. outing. And for Ghana, we do not really see much problems mm. because it has a track record of doing these elections uh, in a multiple democracy mm. since 1992. 92. Yeah. Right. So from where you sit, um, Sheikh, um, we, we, we are wrapping up. Unfortunately, we, we don't have time. Um, from where you sit as the acting chair for Kodeo, looking at the atmosphere and working with the stakeholders and then the, the, the various political parties and um, gauging moods, do you think we are good? Your honest opinion. Do you uh, think honestly, we I, are good? I think, I think we, we are prepared for election, given the assurances, responses of the EC. Whenever there's an anomaly, it was raised, then uh, at least they are able to quickly address and, and give, give information. Mm -hmm. We've heard from the police what their preparedness, and we have seen it clearly, and so on. I mean, citizens have been educated, and still education is going on. Um, the mosques and the churches, opinion leaders are being brought together, and they are talking to, to people to calm down and make sure yes. go, yeah and so on and so forth so given that all these things uh you know ghana is known to be a peaceful country right by our nature we we, we don't want violence so i'm sure uh i'm hopeful that we'll be able to go through this election successfully without so much incident your excellency what do you think you have also been on the ground mm -hmm. gauging moves and interacting with all the um, the, the political actors, the stakeholders. What do you think? Do you think uh, we are fine to go? Actually, or as it is, we actually, just have to go. <laughs> I am amazed at the level of synergy and interface between all the critical actors for the forthcoming election. I am impressed because I have seen how all these agencies, CSOs, NGOs, government authorities, all trying to see that the reputation that Ghana had in the last seven mm -hmm. elections mm -hmm. will be maintained in this eighth election because they have been talking to each other, they have been calming nerves, they have been reaching out. So uh, really, I do not see much problems. And I hope that I will not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, you hope that you will not be surprised. Interesting. No, I hope we, we, we don't have any surprises. We are going to behave. We are going to be good. And um, we are going to be fine. So I, I think we are good. We won't disappoint you. We are, we are fine. 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 We are fine.
Well, thank you very much for coming through for the first episode, um, the premiering of season two of Diplomatic Affairs, and I'm um, very grateful. You two have been my two guests for the opening, and I'm very, very thankful to you for making the time. I know how busy you are, Sheikh, yeah. and I know how busy you are, too. <laughs> so, um, right after the elections, um, I, I think we can make time to discuss yes, um, after the elections. Yes, so, sure. right, so um, my guest... Yes, um, His Excellency Babagana Wakil is the um, ECOWAS representative resident in Ghana and um, speaking on behalf of ECOWAS and then we've had um, um, Sheikh Arimeyao. Arimeyao. Yes, Arimeyao. Sheikh Arimeyao Shaibu, the acting chair for the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, also coming through. And he's also the spokesman for the National Chief Imam. He celebrated his birthday a few days ago, like about two days ago, right? Uh, uh, no, I, I think we did it. I think some months some, some months, months ago, ago. I, I need to come and pay a catsy call well, again. <laughs> all right and thank you so much for watching this has been the maiden edition of season two of diplomatic affairs which came to you live from the studios of pan-african television every saturday from four to five we are on your screens africa 32 african countries via satellite and globally via social media so you can watch live we'll be streaming live and you get to be part of this time around we are promoting interactivity we need you to be part of the show so you share your views with us on all the subjects that will be treated on this platform same time next week we will come your way remember we are counting ballots and not bullets have a good evening my name is harriet natty